Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. Options for taxpayers who need help paying their tax bill. IRS Tax Tip 2022-52 April 5th, 2022. Taxpayers who can't pay the full amount of federal taxes they owe should file their tax return on time and pay as much as possible. Why is that the case? Because the IRS has these sticks that they try to hit you with and they call them penalties and interest. They're not literal sticks, they're figurative sticks called penalties and interest. Those are the things that we're trying to avoid. So if you file late, then you can be you can be subject to penalties and interest. And if you don't pay what is owed, then you could be subject to the penalties and interest. So what you don't want to do is to come to the conclusion that, well, I can't pay my taxes, therefore I'm not gonna file the taxes until I can have enough funds in order to pay the taxes. Because if you do that, the IRS probably will not take action immediately because they're a slow moving bureaucratic entity, but the penalties and interest will most likely be accruing upwards, the stick getting bigger that eventually will hit you with it with a larger stick of the penalties and interest at some point in time. So what you want to do then, even if you can't pay the taxes, is to try to still meet the filing requirements, filing the taxes or filing an extension if you can, and then trying to pay as much as possible because if you owe taxes, paying the taxes will lower the amount of penalties and interest up front. And then if you can't pay the balance, then you typically want to set up like an installment agreement so that uh, it's basically a loan that's going to be set up. So you have a tax obligation now, you got a loan, you're still going to have to pay possibly some penalties and interest in that case, but lower penalties and interest and you'll be in compliance with the IRS, which is of course what they're trying to, you know, get us to do through, that's what the laws are trying to do to keep us in compliance. So if you're in compliance, you have more negotiating power with the IRS, kind of like if you didn't pay your credit card bill or you had a late payment and they hit you with a big penalty for late payment. If you call them up and you have good credit, they might actually waive the payment and, and that's and things are good. But if you don't have uh, good credit, if your payments are late all the time, then they're probably not going to waive the late payment. Same thing is kind of true with the IRS here. If you have a good uh, establishment with them, if you're in compliance and whatnot, then you might be able to waive more of the penalties and the interest more often. So that's the general idea. So this will help reduce penalties and interest. If they can't pay their full bill, they have some other uh, options. Get a loan. So one option, get a loan. In many cases, loan costs may be lower than the combination of interest and penalties the IRS must charge under the federal law. So one option you can have, you, the, the default option for most people is probably to set up a payment plan, which is basically kind of a loan from the IRS. But the IRS charges interest on the amount of the outstanding debt like a loan and possibly still some uh, penalty on it for the late payment. So you could, and so the, they're not, it's not too, uh, ex, you know, they, they're using rates that are not like unreasonable. They're not like credit card rates or something that like balloon up out of control all of a sudden or something like that. But you might be able to find a loan with better rates. So that's another option that you could do. It's a little bit more labor intensive because you'd have to actually go to the bank and get a loan in order to pay off the, the uh, IRS on time, avoiding penalties and interest from the IRS, but incurring in that case, the interest that you're gonna have to pay uh, on the loan. So that's, that's one option. Obviously, if you were to get an installment agreement from the IRS, it's almost easier because that, that way you can usually do that just on the IRS website. You don't really have to talk to anyone or anything like that. You could basically go on the IRS website, get a loan. You could probably get a loan elsewhere, uh, you know, fairly easily these days. You know, it, it's still money, still pretty, pretty red, readily available at this point. Inflation hasn't gone, you know, crazy yet although it seems like it's, it's, going, it's going that direction. But in any case, normally the late payment penalty is 0.5% per month, uh, not to exceed 25% of unpaid taxes. The interest rate adjusted quarterly is currently 4% per year compounded daily. If a taxpayer can't get a loan, the IRS offers other options. What other options do they have, you might ask? I'll tell you, I'll tell you what options they have. They've got an online payment plans. Most individual taxpayers qualify to set up an online payment plan with the IRS, and it only takes a few minutes to apply. So this is pretty easy setup. You can't pay, set up the payment plan with the IRS. Don't just ignore it. Don't just ignore it, because then the, the stick, they like roll the stick down a hill so it gets bigger, it accumulates, and then when they hit you with it, it's heavier, and it hurts.
Uh, so anyways, applicants are notified immediately if their request is approved. There is no need for them to contact the IRS for payment plan or an installment agreement. No need to. They're basically saying, please don't contact us because we don't answer the phone anymore these days due to social distancing rules have decreased our phone capacity, whatever. So in any case, don't call them. You can do it online. That's the way to do it. The agency generally processes online payment plans quicker than requests made with electronically filed tax returns. If a taxpayer just filed their return and they and they know they'll owe a balance, they may be able to set up a payment plan online before they even receive a notice or bill. So you might think, should I wait to basically get the, the processing of the return? You might not want to because that means you're going to be late on the payment. So even if you just file the return, you could set up the payment plan even before the actual tax return is processed, before the bill is sent out from the IRS. So there are two main types of online payment plans. You got the short-term payment plan and the long-term payment plan. First, the short-term payment plan. The payment period is 180 days or less, and the total amount owed is less than $100,000 in combined tax penalties and interest. There's no fee for setting one up, uh, though interest and the late payment penalty continue to accrue. And then we got the long-term payment plan. Payments are monthly. So the first payment plan you know, it's it's a short term plan, 180 days. So then you're you're saying I just need a little bit of time to 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 pay off. And then the long term payment plan is like, well, there's a big balance. I can't pay it off. I need basically like a standard installment loan kind of setup where I pay it monthly and I, and hopefully I can pay it off in chunks like that. So we got the long term payment plan in that case. Payment uh, are monthly and the amount owed. Uh, it must be less than $50,000 in combined tax penalties and interest if the IRS approves a long-term payment plan, also known as installment agreement, a setup fee normally applies. So you got the setup fee, kind of like a credit card late payment fee, but like the credit card, you might be able, uh, if you're in good standing, to try, to try to waive that possibly. And if you're in good standing, they may actually do that you know, like because you're like a good taxpayer customer or whatever. So low income taxpayers may qualify to have the fee waived or reimbursed. In addition, for anyone who filed their return on time, the late payment penalty rate is reduced while an installment agreement is in effect. So it lowers the late payment penalty. The late payment penalty accrues at the rate of 0.25% per month instead of 1% per month. So actually the interest rate that they charge is not too bad, but they also tack on, you still got this penalty that's a lower penalty but still a penalty. And that's why if you actually got a loan from a bank, you might actually be able to, to get a better rate uh, than the penalty and interest. So, so it's another option you can look into. So taxpayers who do not qualify for an online payment agreement may still be able to pay in installments. Taxpayers should review the additional information on payment plans page on irs.gov for details. Delayed collection. If the IRS determines a taxpayer is unable to pay, it may delay collection until their financial condition improves. However, the total amount owed will still increase because the penalties and interest continue to accrue until the taxpayer pays in full. Taxpayers can request a delay by calling the phone number on their notice or 800-829-1040, 800-829-1040 penalty relief i need some relief from these penalties these sticks you keep hitting me with it's like i can't even see the stick keeps hitting me penalty relief some taxpayers qualify to have their late filing or late payment penalties reduced or eliminated this is done on a case-by-case -case basis based on reasonable cause alternatively where a taxpayer has a history of compliance the irs can typically provide relief for first-time abatement programs so if it's if it's like this is a weird situation which it is for many people because the tax code has been changing changing working situations changing home life situations moving from w-2 employment to gig work or schedule c's and whatnot so it might be many people's first time where they're saying, hey, I didn't actually keep up with my payments because it's a crazy year this year. Well, then it might you might be able to get that first time abatement, kind of like a credit card when it's like I didn't I didn't make the payment, but it's the first time I didn't make the payment. Waive this hundred dollar penalty, please. And then they might do it because you're because you're typically 
are in good standing. So taxpayers should review the penalty relief page on irs.gov for more information. We also have the offer and compromise. Note that offer and compromise is the type of thing when you look at the commercials that say we can help you reduce your tax debt and this and that if you owe over $15,000 or something like that. This is the thing that they're kind of alluding to. But just note that you have a lot of this information on the IRS website. So if you are getting help for something like an offer and compromise with a large outstanding balance that you're looking into, one, uh, you want to make sure you do your research in terms of who you're getting help from because a lot of times the commercials that you see on TV aren't actually firms. <laughs> They're advertisement agencies that then will, then will allocate people possibly to different firms, which may not be a bad thing, but that just means you have no idea which firm you're actually going through because you're going through an advertisement agency. So kind of you know, be aware of that and then do your research on the offer and compromise because it's pretty systematic and they have all the information on the IRS website to kind of see how, it, how the whole thing works. So you can see if you would qualify for one or not pretty, for most situations pretty clearly. So some taxpayers qualify to settle their tax bill for less than the full amount due through an offer and compromise. So you're gonna say, I got a fairly large tax bill, I wanna settle for less. Now again, why would the IRS do that? Because again, you're thinking of them, not, they're not a charity over here, the IRS. They're, you can think of them kind of like a business, kind of like the bank. And they're going to say, well, why would they not do that? And because your inc what if your income is so low that there's no possible way that you're going to pay the tax bill? That's basically what's happening here. And they're going to say, I understand that you're not going to be able to pay the tax bill. So what it would be in both of our best interests to lower the tax bill to something you can pay because then that's better than not getting any money at all <laughs> would be the position of the person that you're getting the money from, right? So that's that's going to be uh, the, the general idea. So what would they need then to prove that? They're going to need individual income statements, like a balance sheet and an income statement. Those are the forms that you're, in essence, going to have to fill out to determine if, if an offer and compromise would be appropriate, would be the general idea. And if you're, if you're living in a very expensive place or house or something like that, and you're driving around a $100,000 car or something like that, then it's less likely you would think that the offer and compromise is going to say, oh, well, you clearly can't, don't have the means to pay the bills, right? So, and if you're making, you know, a lot of money per month, then the IRS is less likely to determine that you're going to not be able to pay the bills, right? So that's, so that's the kind of idea that's with the offer and compromise. So there is a 205 non-refundable OIC offer and compromise application fee. However, it is generally waived for individual low-income taxpayers. Offers require a partial payment of the offer amount except uh, for offers filed based on debt as to liability. So the offer and compromise pre-qualifier tool, there's a link to the pre-qualifier tool. So again, do your own research on it. You can get a pretty decent idea as to whether it would be applicable to you using the tool. And if it is, then you can go from there and say, say, do I, should I get more help on this? Or do I want to kind of uh, go at my own, do my own thing here? Then you can check that out. But there's the tool. So it can help determine eligibility for individuals and interested in applying. There's a link to that and I'll link to all that other stuff that we said there was a link to in here. And there'll be a link to this in the description.